a continuation of the build, um, but what we're going to do is uh, have Mark talk a little bit about some of the software aspects of it. So if you're still trying to catch up, then feel free to keep going on, uh, work on the board, work on the software. But otherwise, uh, Mark is going to give us a little explanation of some of the interesting parts of it. Cool. I've got that. OK, so uh, basically, I wrote uh, the firmware for the device with Angus's help. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, cheers. Uh, so what I did, oh, I'm just going to run through a, little, a few things about the firmware, so the onboarding process, and then just give you a little bit of background as to how, how I've built it. So basically, setting up the firmware and IDE and stuff like that we've been through, um, connecting up the USB device. So what, what I wanted to do with the, with the firmware was a lot of the examples that come with the ESP environment have effectively hard-coded Wi-Fi credentials. And that really, you know, so many times I've seen Wi-Fi credentials in Git and stuff like that. So what I wanted to do is just do a, the most minimal setup to get something where we save the credentials onto the device. So what I've done is you'll see in the actual, um, in the firmware, there's something called ESP onboarding. So that's a small library I've written. It's open source on my GitHub. And all it does is bind a REST endpoint when the device boots to accept an onboarding request. So the idea is you effectively flash the device it's, it's unconfigured. You open the Arduino serial monitor. There's a little access token. So I decided to add at least a small amount of security to the device, because I know people are going to accidentally go onto someone else's device and then onboard it to the, a network, and then they're going to lose it, all that sort of stuff. So what I wanted to do was just make it you know, just a little bit of randomness, a little bit of uh, secret that um, is printed in the serial console. And then you just effectively copy that token as it's come out in the serial console and then connect to your AP. So that's the AP on the ESP device. In the serial console, I also print out the name of the ESP because they all look very similar. And once you've got onto that AP, you can connect to the device and then just issue a curl request to, to basically configure it. And in this particular case, we've got our little access token, which is like a hexadecimal sort of uh, value that's printed out in the serial console. We just interpolate that, just put that into the string or into the uh, header, and then we basically pass in the SSID and password. So what actually happens behind the scenes is all I do is, is get those values, write them into a JSON file, and put them into the file system of the device. It's pretty simple. It's only like 20 or 30 lines of code. Um, and then when uh, and basically that's persisted in the flash, so there's a module uh, on the, in the ESP environment called FS, and that enables you to save files, like a, a normal file system, into the flash. So once the device reboots, it drops, hopefully drops on to the, ES, uh, to the Wi-Fi network, and then you've effectively onboarded the device. If you reset it, it comes back up, reconnects to Wi-Fi, it's all happy. Um, so the next phase of that, so it's effectively a two-step process. So what I wanted to do was provide the ability to not only onboard the device onto uh, Wi-Fi, I also wanted to onboard the device to send some data via MQTT. So who here has used MQTT before? Yeah, a few people. So just a very short background on MQTT it was effectively uh, it was developed by um, uh, IBM in the UK, and I think it was '98. Um, it's a very lightweight, simple protocol on top of TCP. There's multiple implementations around, and the main project for it, or the main banner project, is called PAHO, under the Eclipse project. So there's libraries and servers and implementations for a whole raft of languages. And basically, that protocol is simple enough, and it was originally designed to enable sensors to pr basically send um, pieces of data in an asynchronous it's a pub-sub protocol. It runs over a single TCP connection. There's no fancy muxing, demuxing, or anything like that. It's very, very simple. The specification is only about 20 pages, so much simpler than HTTP or any of those sort of protocols. Um, and in this particular case, what I'm encouraging you to do, 
on your machine is install a small MQTT broker, typically called, or one called Mosquito. Typically it's in Homebrew if you're on the Mac or apt-get. It's basically everywhere. Um, and then what I want you to do is note down your IP address, so the IP address of your device on the Linux Conf network. And then once you've onboarded the, the actual ESP, it'll print out its IP on that network. And then you're effectively asking the ESP to send and stream all the data from all the sensors on your plant to a broker on your machine. So basically what I do here is I get you to put the IP of the, the ESP in here, and then we've got the access token in there, and then at the end here, we put the IP address of the broker that we want to send to, which is you're going to be your laptop. Um, if you don't want to install an MQTT device or MQTT server, so if you're on Windows or whatever, you can use test.mqtt.org. So that's available, an open broker sitting on the internet, and then you can go and find your ESP device on there. Um, it's, it's pretty simple. If you've got any problems and you want to try the advanced version, which is, is pretty much that, um, just give us a yell. One of us, most of us know MQTT, so we can talk you through that. Um, if you're connecting to your local machine, you just use an IP address. Um, and then effectively on your local machine, you use Mosquito Sub, which is a client tool, to connect to the broker, which it defaults to connecting to localhost, and then it outputs all of the values that you've got. So that's, that's pretty much a two-step process. So get it onto Wi-Fi, get it streaming data to your laptop. Um, and then you can use this particular pattern. There's, um, there's multiple uh, MQTT services around um, that you can subscribe to. You can use the public broker if you don't really care. Um, and you can set up, you could set up Mosquito on one of your own servers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so what I've put together is there's just a few references. All of this sort of stuff is in the readme, in the repo. And uh, there's another readme under the um, firmware directory in the repo. There's something called uh, ESPlant MQTT Sensor. In that, uh, in that folder is also another readme, which has more detail about the onboarding and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, if you've got any problems with that or have any questions, just come up and ask one of us. Uh, most of us have been through it. Yes? Are the, are the quotes fixed up in the, uh... Yes, I fixed the quotes in the readme. So you can copy and paste from the readme. I copied from, key, uh, from my terminal into Keynote and then Keynote to the readme. And of course, the quotes got screwed up. Um, so I fixed that. So that's, yep. Yes, I'll, I'll update that. So an additional thing is if you do put it on the wrong Wi-Fi or enter the wrong password or anything like that, it'll be basically trying to connect to the Linux Conf Wi-Fi. So what you can do is there's a tool called esptool.py, and that tool will allow you to erase the ESP device. So if you screw it up or you do anything wrong, you're, you're going to go back to that tool um, and erase it. I think there was there an option in the IDE as well to do it. I'm not sure. But this one, this is the fail-safe way. It's basically called esptool.py. Um, again, there's references in the readmes and stuff like that. If there isn't, I will update it. Um, so, and the, just to go through it a little bit, there's also a more advanced onboarding tool, which is written by some people, um, and it's referenced from the ESP Arduino site. I found it a little bit buggy, and they, were having a, they had a, a bunch of discussions with the maintainers of the Arduino environment. It's a lot more complicated, so I just tried try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, and, oh, we back. Yeah, and, and by the same token, uh, I think uh, once you've got everything running and you've, you've got your environment up and you've got the, the device loaded, the MQTT sensor library, the INO file, basically that doesn't have support for NeoPixels or the motion sensor. So. You can go to the test programs and stuff like that and go and grab the code that's used in the test program and graph that into this particular um, project. So that's an exercise for everyone. If you, if you want to do something extra on the software side, you can basically start hacking on that. There's a few other things that you can pull out of the device. Um, 
you can mess with that as well. But all of the, all of the really good info uh, about the environment is on the, the ESP SDK, this, this, this site here, ESP8266 Arduino. There's a libraries section. There's a whole raft of libraries that are, are compatible with this particular device. There's lots of, lots of ways of connecting those devices. You can buy them from Adafruit all over the place. So definitely keep going with that. Uh, the other thing that I've done is I have actually connected this to a site that's on the web. Just grab this lever, drag it this way. Oh, look at that. So what I've done is I've set up a version of um, a version of Mosquito, a little bridge to bridge from Mosquito, so bridge the MQTT messages into a service called InfluxDB. So InfluxDB, has anyone heard of InfluxDB? A few people. So it's a time series database. It's basically a NoSQL time series database. Great, great, great project. Very easy to get going and very, very good for time series. That's all it does. What I've done is part of that project is something called Grafana, which is a nice drag and droppy graphing URI, URI, uh, UI. And I've just effectively set that up on a machine. I've used Let's Encrypt and a few other bits and pieces to give me certificates. And I've set that up with live data from one of the boards over here. So what I'll be doing is, once this is over, we'll probably send out a newsletter or a, a follow-up email, and we'll, we'll aggregate all of the links. And I'll post the Ansible and Docker stuff that I've actually used to craft this environment, so you can have a look at it, see if it applies to you, all that sort of stuff. So any questions? If not, I'll be floating around. Definitely harass me. Uh, but as you can see, it's pretty easy to glue something together with off-the-shelf open source components to give you a nice UI that you can see live data on. Cool. Thank you very much.